so good morning everybody i hope everybody is doing great this is your nutritionist on the go kamal deep singh ajla from eru diet nutrition i am live today uh, so i hope everybody is having a relaxed sunday enjoying your holiday people who are at work do enjoy your work also don't be sad if you're not free at home on your sunday you might get some other free time so uh, the reason i am live today is that uh last week i did a live session with uh, my very intellectual friend pratik das gupta uh, the topic of the discussion was uh, about the documentary named the game changers uh, due to some technical difficulties facebook has uh, you know disabled the function of broadcasting a live video means uh, while i'm going live i cannot add another one of my friend for a video chat and uh, you know that can be shared live so that's broadcasting facebook has stopped that broadcasting function so we went live on instagram uh, another set of technicality difficulties we could not download the video the live session that was about one hour long and very information rich uh, from instagram so trying everything that we had uh, we came up with this final solution is that pratik das gupta just now did a live session solo of his own and he reviewed the documentary and uh, it is my turn now i'm going to review the netflix documentary that is the game changers so for the people who have already watched this documentary uh, you know stay tuned guys and for people who have not yet watched the documentary you can watch the documentary on netflix or if you can find it somewhere else best of luck with that uh so let's start uh, basically the game changer documentary is uh a vegan vegan documentary you know what is a vegan a vegan is someone who eats only plants and whole grains and fruits so they try to avoid they actually avoid all of the animal products that includes the milk the chicken the fish and even dairy products they do not eat dairy so that guy is a vegan vegetarian on the other hand has a different definition so vegetarian can be someone who eats plants and fruits and vegetables along with some sort of dairy products or even eggs okay uh, so this documentary basically it's uh, the executive producers of this documentary are arnold schwarzenegger uh, our own terminator and uh, jackie chan and uh, james cameron so these are some very big names in the hollywood industry they have uh, they have uh, executively produced they have co-produced this uh, documentary so let's jump back on the content of the documentary so the the documentary starts uh, with an introduction of a combat specialist a five discipline back black belt guy his name is uh, john wilk james wilk okay so he he's a he's a combat uh, expert he has black belts in five different disciplines of uh, martial arts he has also been a mixed martial artist he has won the ultimate fighting uh, championship trophy also he was in the ufc uh, but his record was not that great so in the documentary he explains that when during the training session of his mma career he got injured and he was put out of sport for 6 months for recovery that's where he started reading about how to recover fast uh, with the help of proper nutrition and the set of papers that he read that he came across were mostly pointing towards one thing that a whole plant based vegan diet free from all the dairy and free from all the animal products is the way to have a better and full recovery so that was what he uh analyze from what his findings was so that sets him on a quest to find out that is vegan diet helpful uh, for athletes in recovery and in endurance sports or in combat sports so it starts from there the movie first point that they try to uh, make in this movie is about the gladiators the roman gladiators so they they show that gladiators were these prized fighters and uh, top of the class and elite level uh, people who were fighting in a in a sport based like in the modern times and they were getting the best facilities and they were getting the best medicine and uh, care at that time 
honestly that's not true they also say that uh, they were mostly vegetarian that part is true so the gladiators mostly did eat barley as a staple grain but they were the elite among the roman classes i would beg to differ gladiators are not the the gladiators like like they're shown in hollywood movies like russell crow has portrayed a gladiator himself the real gladiators were not like that they were not the people with huge muscles and a six pack they actually were majority of them were slaves and they were war prisoners so when two uh, two clans the two countries they go against uh, war so the people who get captured you know they are they slaves so typically they are thrusted into uh, this barbaric sport of being a gladiator so where you fight with weapons and swords and spears to you know uh, entertain people and entertain the roman king the death ratio of these gladiator fights was not as high but the level of injuries that they suffered during these combats uh, that was very deadly so why do you need a high grain based diet if you are a gladiator so obviously the more muscular you are the less amount of physical uh, the body fat uh, you have more vascularity you will have that means more popping of the veins from your arms and from your chest or from the other parts of your body your veins will be easily visible you can see the example of a fitness athlete who has a very low body fat percentage or a bodybuilder you will see his veins popping out from his shoulders and from his biceps or from his forearms when your veins are exposed in such a way when you don't have enough body fat to cover up those veins or have a thick layer of skin there are higher chances of a weapon cutting through those veins and that might lead to fatal consequences because you might lose a lot of blood on the other hand if you have a good thick layer of fat beneath your skin it is easier for you to absorb the blows the combat punches and the kicks and even the attacks with the weapon cause there is a less probability of uh, an, an superior vein to be cut or you know damaged in this type of uh, fight so what is the best way of bulking up on fat so bulking up your body and storing a lot of fat that is eat a lot of carbohydrates those carbohydrates came from barley the reason the uh, the gladiator diet was mostly vegetables and grains was not because they knew that grains and vegetables were better but because they needed to bulk up they needed to store enough fats to protect themselves when they are in the combat arena the documentary next switches up to the ultimate fighting championship that is UFC that is the world's number one uh, mixed martial arts performer people people who know me personally they know I am a huge UFC fan from a last couple of years so the incident that is described in this movie uh, I have seen that live so they talk about a, a, a fight between uh, the Irish striker Conor McGregor who later became a two division champion also versus uh, another fighter that was in his retirement in a dormant state so he comes back and he defeats this talented guy who was on a 15 fight winning streak so what the point they try to prove is that Conor McGregor was a meat eater whereas Nate Diaz his opponent who beat him who broke his 15 fight winning streak was a vegan a little more dig at Nate Diaz to be honest he lost his second fight just a month later to the same person Conor McGregor beat him in his second fight they went on a decision that part was totally not included that was purposely excluded from the documentary so from that only you start to realize the sense of you know being a biased approach towards a certain topic uh, when you try to hide facts or you highlight partial facts so that's where you you know expose yourself as a bias so that is where I realized that this documentary is not a document it's gonna be a botchumentary with a lot of botches and with a lot of misleading information so 
Conor McGregor beat Nate Diaz. He became a two division champion. Yes, he lost to lost his next couple of matches to Floyd Mayweather and to Khabib Nurmagomedov, who guys are also meat eaters. And where does Nate Diaz goes with that? He lost he lost his second match. He went into a dormant stage for another three years. He recently made another appearance where he was busted by the United States anti-doping agency just 12 days before his actual fight. He had something in his body that was objectionable, which came from a vegan organic supplement. So there you go. Okay. So vegan organic supplement and he was a vegan athlete. So he popped up for something objectionable. But anyhow, he got the permission to fight. He was brutally dismantled and the doctor stopped the fight after three rounds. So that is what Nate Diaz was. So highlighting Nate Diaz as someone who beat a two division champion who was a meat eater, that is totally a, 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 a biased comparison for anybody. Okay, so there are athletes, there are fighters, there are stars who have reached the pinnacle of sports either by eating meat or a few who have also world records and who have won some gold medals, uh, highly appreciated uh, their hard work. They also have won, uh, you know, gold medals and won races and uh, other competitions. But the amount of hard work that is being put behind in making a top class athlete cannot be based on the factor alone that the guy is a vegetarian or a vegan or a meat eater. Okay, for example, now right now, I, I can claim that eating meat is more, more uh, powerful to gain more strength. So you know, some vegan athlete might stand up and, you know, he might challenge me to a bout and, you know, kick my rear. Why? Because he's trained in that and I'm not trained in that. So the diet does not play a, a role in that. Okay. So suppose even if a, a, some another kind of a mature person who challenges me to a bout, maybe he might get a piece of my mind because I might be superior in some sort of skill than him when winning a competition or winning a fight or breaking the world record comes skill and hard work and training are a majority part yes diet is a big part of their regime if they do not have the best type of diet they will not excel in their performance but diet is not the only factor okay so they try to bias and they try to mislead information and you know thrust you in making up a mindset even before they come to the facts so they try to keep you in a position where they have already established that a vegan fighter can beat a meat eater so now they come up with some false and misleading facts which will drove you away which will drive you away uh, from the real situation of nutrition and healthcare. Next, they keep on showing anecdotes and they keep on uh, keep on uh, introducing us with the track athletes and with the weightlifters and with powerlifters and with cyclists and another Olympians and all sorts of people. While I was researching about this documentary after I couldn't get the names, I couldn't get the name list, but someone was stating on the Internet that a huge number of athletes could not make the cut. What does he mean with that? That means when they were making this documentary, that that huge number of athletes uh, were vegan at the time. So they gave some interviews, uh, they got some good camera time, you know, the interviews were short and the trainings and all the schedules were short. But when it came to the release, the final editing version of the, the documentary, those people were no more vegan. They were no more plant-based. So for for them, veganism was an experiment. They were experimenting with their diet and the documentary guys, they came along with their cameras and they interviewed him, but uh, they couldn't make the final cut. So they were left behind with handful of athletes or uh, which all the guys are, uh, you know, shown in the documentary. So anyways, coming back to training aspect, when a cyclist trains, okay, he trains, he, he, he builds up his muscle endurance, he builds up his uh, VO2 max, he builds up his stamina and his oxygen carrying capacity and the recovery of his muscles. So when you switch diets, obviously whenever you switch diets, there will be some positives and some negatives. So 
claiming that a cyclist improved his performance just by switching a diet so everybody should switch their diet it doesn't sound practical okay it's not the case it's not how how the how the world runs so for example like the same goes in everything for example i am using i am using uh, a so and so company's mobile phone and i am satisfied with that and do i have the liberty to trash all the other mobile phone companies and proclaim that my brand is the best or same goes for clothing or same goes for shoes or same goes for diet one thing might work with someone so you cannot apply, apply that on masses we all have our own upbringing we have our own body structure we have our own gut biome the the microorganisms the helpful microorganisms that are in our uh, digestive tract they they are the main responsible uh, organisms to break down our food and absorb the nutrients we all have different microbial flora the microorganisms in my gut cannot be matched to anyone in this world i have a specific ratio and set of microorganisms so that means a diet which is suitable for me will not be suitable for the rest of the people plain and simple okay so when when we talk about the one diet is going to excel a performance of one athlete it is not going to apply on the whole team everybody has their own body everybody has their own metabolism so they try to shove this idea into your throat that a weightlifter a powerlifter a cyclist a track athlete a, a this and that a, a ufc fighter they are all vegan so you can also go vegan whereas it is a choice of either going vegan or not it is totally based on a personal zone personality and the individual nutritional requirement i myself might not have the requirements of a cyclist obviously i don't have it i'm not a cyclist i'm not a trained athlete so my nutrition profile and my nutritional requirement will be different so to assess what your nutritional requirement is you don't have to watch a documentary for that yes you might take some positive points out of the documentary if they are unbiased but to know what your nutrition requirements are we have to check into your lifestyle and your health status and and whatever the daily schedule and what type of work you do so wasim after here he's joined us and uh, we are omnivorous humans should eat both vegetables and non-veg exactly uh, you are totally on point and this is what I'm trying to explain. So, good point, bro. So, next is they show us a, a weightlifter and a strong man. That's Patrick Bubumian. And uh, I think I forgot the name of the, uh, the weightlifter. He was in the Olympic team. He won a gold medal in his category. That was Kendrick Ferris. Yes, his name was, his name was Kendrick Ferris. So I'll take the prime example of these two people. Why? Because one is a weightlifter, one is a powerlifter. These category of guys are believed to require more protein for more strength. So guys, if you want to know my personal opinion on strength, protein and meat eating, yes, it will help. Yes, it will help you build muscle. Yes, proteins are necessary for your body, for your strength, for your endurance, for everything. There is a limit to that. You cannot go above the limit and desire the same effect. So example, if a person getting 25 grams of protein from an animal source, see that is a very basic level of human existence. You are trying to survive over here. You're not going to build any muscle okay you increase the amount of food you take you incorporate some uh, vegetables and milk and other non-veg and eggs you reach a level of 50 grams of protein intake in a day you are still on a survival mode but what is the difference between having 30 grams a day and 50 grams a day is at 30 grams you are barely living and you will lose your muscle mass that's not enough to sustain on 50 grams you might not even gain any muscular weight any lean body weight but you might not lose the amount of little bit of muscle that you have gained you know rev up a step 
go to 75 to 80 grams of protein consumption on a daily basis you might build some good muscle if you're exercising if you're strength training if you are going to a gym working out or you're doing any type of sports you will not lose that amount of muscle if you even stay out of the sport for 15 days or one month or so now going up to 100 and 120 grams of protein in a day now this is all an assumption uh, an assumption and an example of a common group okay now i'm not talking uh, talking sp uh, specifically for any person now for someone who is consuming 125 grams every day protein from supplements or from non-vegetarian foods from eggs or meat he will have a diminished effect in terms of muscle growth you cannot expect that the ratio that you increase your protein will be uh, assigned or will be assimilated or will be aligned with the ratio with your muscle gain that does not mean that if you have 300 grams of protein in a day you will have more amount of muscle no body has a limit to use proteins okay so those proteins up to a certain level are required for your basic survival and up to a certain level will help you increase the muscle mass if you go above that level you are only going to create some stress on your liver and on your kidneys you are not going to get much benefit from that so huge meat eaters people who eat steaks big pieces of steaks they are they are misguided they are those those are the people who have disturbed you know this whole uh, nutritional foundation they win and they make records and they they eat huge amount of proteins from animals and everybody starts copying them it's not like that the body requirement is dif different secondly you cannot have as much muscle as much of the protein you eat it does not work like that So I hope I've made myself clear on the protein issue. A certain amount of protein is required, but if you go above that amount, you are only going to create unnecessarily stress on your kidneys and on your liver. Coming to bodybuilders, weightlifters and powerlifters, they consume too much protein. The reason bodybuilders are having heart transplants and kidney transplants and liver transplants and heart surgeries is because their diet is not good. They might look like the epitome of muscularity in their peak years, but from the internal side, they are no good as a normal person or even worst. Okay, same goes for power lifters. Now, anybody who follows uh, bodybuilding or power sports, there is a term called anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids build muscle. Anabolic steroids build speed. Anabolic steroids build endurance. It depends upon how you use your anabolic steroids. If you're using them for strength, they will increase your strength. If you're using them for speed, they will increase your speed. If you're using them for endurance sports and for recovery, they will increase the amount of recovery that you are going to get. Anabolic steroids are these magical components which are going to excel you at your athletic performance, but kill you on the other hand. So it's a choice that professional athletes do make. Weightlifters, bodybuilders and powerlifters are the community which uses abundant of these anabolic steroids along with other performance enhancing drugs. There was this IFBB bodybuilding Mr. Olympia competition in 1991. So people who follow bodybuilding might know. If you don't know, then go watch some history about bodybuilding. In 1991, the Mr. Olympia that was uh, being conducted, that was a steroid free, a doping free Mr. Olympia. And many of the former qualifiers could not qualify. Many of the former ranking players could not be ranked even the winner of the mr olympia they got disqualified in fact four out of top 10 of the mr olympia rankers they got disqualified and they looked weak as compared to the previous year the 1990 and the 92 if you compare all three they looked weak they didn't gain any much muscle so it's not about nutrition alone don't forget the ton of anabolic steroids and performance enhancing drugs that you are putting in your body 
and these fight uh, these uh, some of the fighters also in mixed martial arts and uh, Olympic athletes, Olympic wrestlers, power lifters, weight lifters, bodybuilders, they all use anabolic steroid or I can say majority of them use anabolic steroid. So vegan power lifter and vegan weight lifter will not tell you how much amount of supplement or steroid they are taking. Isn't that interesting? They're trying to project this image of a strong man, Patrick Bobomi, and a, a man who looks like Wolverine and has power like an ox who can, you know, topple off cars just by his raw power. What is he taking? Tell us what his diet plan is. Tell us what he's eating all day. He says plants and vegetables. I disagree. I disagree. He takes a tons of supplements, maybe steroids too. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not, but supplements for sure. If he claims that he's getting all his proteins from plants, then why is he taking supplements? Why is the need for supplements, protein supplements for any vegan athlete or any vegan non-athlete also? On your social media, you might be following some people who are vegan, maybe some stars, Hollywood stars, celebrities, some, uh, you know, uh, athletes or some, um, what we can say fitness models who are vegan if you do follow them ask them if they are taking any protein supplements or not if they say they don't they are particular they you know they're lying to your face if they say yes if you are taking supplements then how can you claim that you are getting all the proteins from plants you are misleading the common population okay for your own protein needs you are taking supplements and you're guiding others that you get everything from plants. What if a person who is a follower of you starts taking a plant based diet and does not incorporate plant based supplements with it? Obviously, he's going to get sick, sick and ill and he's going to lose his muscle mass because there was a time in my in my uh, professional career, I tried to evaluate the diet of a plant based vegan eater. So I was eating plant-based and vegetarian for about quite a long time, about 14 months. And at the 14 months, since I was not taking any supplements, I did finally feel the effects of decreasing muscle mass of my body. So I started taking supplement and within five days, I, I immediately felt the effect of that protein deficiency in my body so I cut off with my vegetarian vegan diet and I switched back to eggs fish and chicken and meat and I incorporate both of the world together now as I've already told you eating excess amount of proteins will not only put pressure on your liver and kidneys it's not healthy eating excess animal protein is not healthy in terms of the stress it causes but up to a certain limit which is allowed, you have to take some animal based protein in the form of milk, eggs, fish, chicken or meat. Incorporate it with your vegetable diet. For example, a person like me, I personally eat more amount of vegetables than majority of the vegans. Okay, I eat about more than 10 cups of vegetables on some days a week and in general I eat six to eight cups of vegetables almost every day along with eggs along with milk along with uh, some cheese along with some non-veg food okay so balance it out so coming back to the documentary there was this doctor okay he totally tried to fool people and I think maybe people who are switching to vegan diets after watching this video he got them fooled okay Congratulations, doctor. You have just misled, uh, you know, misled uh, a huge number of uh, population. Congratulations on that. Now, this guy claims protein is a poor source of energy, is a poor source of glucose. Well, who didn't knew that? Who already didn't knew that? Proteins are not meant to be used as glucose in your body. Proteins are the tertiary requirement when it comes to making glucose for your body tertiary requirements what is number one sugars and carbohydrates 
if you run out of sugars and carbohydrates fats is the second source the stored energy in terms of triglycerides and stored body fat so that is our second source body's second preference okay and if both the carbohydrates and fats are finished or depleted or are in a very low amount that is the point when your body is going to break down proteins and use it for energy proteins are not meant to be used for energy proteins are only meant to be primarily used for the breakdown into amino acids and then reconstructing those amino acids to build up tissues to build up cells to build up muscles and another biochemical processes that are happening in our body protein was never the choice of any athlete for energy the endurance athletes they use a term called carb loading carb loading means eating a whole lot of bread whole lot of grain whole lot of potatoes and white pastas and all these cereals and grain made food before their competition why excess amount of carbohydrates that will be stored as triglycerides and muscle glycogen and blood glucose they will be used in the next day's event that let it be a marathon let it be a cycling event any proteins was never used protein was never used for endurance or for energy giving purposes so well done doctor you have misled quite a number of people who are going vegan who might possibly get sick because of you so uh, next coming down they made a weird comparison over there they tried to evaluate the amount of protein we get from vegetarian sources with the amount of protein that we are going to get from plants and versus the animals so what they did is they took two examples from the vegan world one is peanut butter and one is lentils okay they say a cup of lentils a cup of lentils have enough protein to the equivalent of three whole eggs or a three ounce piece of meat well fairly agree you are right some of you might have a peanut butter in your home you can check the label you can check the nutrition label it will have about 20 25 or 28 grams of protein per 100 grams of serving have you ever eaten a 100 gram serving of a peanut butter I suppose not I suppose it is very hard to do I say I have tried to do it once in my life and it I felt miserable after that it was so heavy and it was so unappetizing I couldn't eat peanut butter for coming months after that incident I also tried to eat a hundred grams of pulse protein that was in the form of ground flour I took a hundred gram measuring of a gram flour I cooked it into uh, chilas and I tried to eat them and it was a havoc on my stomach why is that so the amount the quantity that you have to eat in plants and pulses to get enough uh, amount of proteins is huge try soaking a hundred grams of lentils or any other whole pulse or sprouts try soaking that and try eating that the next day you will understand what i'm trying to say the quantity is huge to get 25 grams of plant-based protein you have to eat huge quantities and not everyone can do it someone with an extraordinary appetite might find it difficult to do rather leave it to the normal person a normal person might eat 100 grams of pulse in a whole day so what does that accounts for 24 to 25 grams of protein in a whole day compare that to 100 grams of chicken which is hardly four small pieces 100 grams of fish that is hardly small four pieces or an egg is about roughly 80 grams if it's a large egg it is uh, about 90 or 100 grams so it is easier to eat bulk quantities of non-vegetarian food which will give, give us more dense protein okay so this was that you cannot evaluate because you are not able to eat 100 grams of dal or 100 grams of other vegetarian sources or peanut butter you cannot eat that in one time whereas you can easily eat up to 250 grams of chicken or fish 
uh, or eggs I cannot say eggs you can eat three eggs normally a person can eat three eggs or two eggs so that comparison is totally weird okay now coming down to a statement that they made plants plants have all the amino acids fairly true not every plant will have every amino acid for example i was recently uh, searching for a plant based protein for some one of my client so methionine was something that was not found in either rice protein or either pea protein so that means a combination of vegetables and pulses will give you a much more proper ratio of the amino acids so coming to now the carnivore world eggs are a complete protein milk are a complete protein fish are a complete protein with the extra amount of omega-3 fatty acids well meat is a complete protein chicken is a complete protein so a complete protein food which came from plants okay yes they did eat plants and grains that's where their source of protein was but that doesn't mean you also have to go towards the same thing you cannot eat huge amounts of plants a cow a ox a gorilla they might be huge they are vegetarians they have a lot of power but they keep on eating whole day they might eat about to 40 kilograms of vegetation in one day you cannot hardly eat 400 grams of vegetable foods in a day how are you comparing those how are you making those comparisons you are comparing humans with animals animals have a totally different endocrine system they eat all day they keep on grazing all day their digestive system is different from ours okay as my friend Pratik Das Gupta has already said in his review which I have posted on my timeline also you guys can check that out he has made a very significant uh, you know highlightation of the fact that these are rumens they have four chambered stomachs they graze all day the food is being digested throughout in different chambers of their stomach we do not have that digestive system so it is hard for us to break down that amount of uh, plants first of all it's hard to eat that amount and second is it's hard to digest all that amount of fiber and plants because our body is not designed if you are going to eat all day when are you going to get your time to watch this documentary when are you going to get the time to work when are you going to uh, get the time to cook food if you're eating all day what what is your life humans are not designed that way humans are designed to eat once or twice in a day maybe three times in a day and even if they have a big bulky meal they can sustain for the next few days without food this is how humans are designed so you cannot make this comparison that uh, animals also get their proteins from plants and you can directly eat plants to get the animals have helped concentrate that amount of protein for you okay they eat a lot of plants that amino acid that build, builds up their muscles and now those muscles are a form of dense and concentrated protein for other carnivores including human beings so if you do have some protein requirement go for that go for some good amount of meat to fulfill your protein requirements okay so the next they keep on showing us and doctor studies they show us a couple of weird backyard science type of experiments also they gave three burritos to three different people and then they took out their blood sample one was a bean burrito one was a uh, beef burrito one was a chicken burrito and then they compared their blood analysis and they labeled the whole experiment as endothelium function endothelium function is totally a different thing now from where they get these stupid ideas is there was this test done on a hamburger that if you eat a hamburger the arterial function the endothelial function of your arteries decline the declining endothelial function can cause damage to the arteries can clog your arteries can cause a stroke or a heart attack they blamed the whole decrease in the endothelial function on the meat patty of that hamburger 
they ignored the ketchup they ignored the dressings the other salads the dressings that they use they ignored the fact that the bun was made out of bread they ignored the fact that meat was actually formed into meat by adding another preservatives and another additives and some uh, you know high high uh, salt and enzymes all these type of things to you know hold together that patty they left all the other in ingredients behind and they blamed the decrease in endothelial function on one meat patty alone why didn't they do this same test with a veggie burger i'm surprised do a test you know people who are into r and d do a test with a chicken burger and do a comparative analysis with a makalu tikki burger i am guaranteed that maybe if not equal and maybe you will going to get worst numbers on the veg burger that is the the, the, the tikki is made from the patty is made from potatoes or other vegetables why why is that because eating burgers is bad for your arteries not the meat in the patty is bad for your arteries but the whole package is bad for your arteries okay that whole thing is bad for you so that is from where these people get such ideas so the centrifuge blood and they say all right the person with the, the vegan diet the bean burrito he's not having much of a blood uh, much of a fat in his uh, serum after the centrifugation the serum is clear whereas the people who eat meat they have some fat this study was done in 1950s where the person eating the vegetarian diet was also given avocados and his blood was also the serum was also milky all right when the initially when this first of all in the 1950s in the 1950s the nutrition science was not even you know in in its in its diapers we didn't knew about vitamins we didn't knew about how the body worked how macros are assimilated in your body so that is something very very old very outdated secondly they are trying to be again they are trying to push you away from meat so this is what this whole documentary is about a vegan fighter beating a meat eater a person getting a medal or baking a world record while on a vegan diet and he is totally against animal products so the whole propaganda the whole package seems less like eating plants but more like avoiding meats it should be done it should be done in a certain degree but not to a degree where this documentary actually took them okay they took it to extreme levels okay uh, do not recommend going that extreme so coming up next is uh, they did this weird experiment okay that was so weird they checked the amount of the, the threshold and the power of libido or erection of three university level athletes so they gave them these devices okay which they had to wrap around their penis and sleep they gave them a non-vegetarian diet one day and the next day gave them a vegetarian diet and then they compared that in their sleep how many involunteered erections that they had what was the strength of the erection what was the time of the erection so see when it comes to males especially especially uh, being more manly okay is is a huge part of our ego so what they're trying to do is they're trying to put a nail through that ego by misleading information by doing these weird uh, you know experiments you know which does not prove anything eating plants will give you better erections not provable not provable just by just by a backyard science experiment like they did okay I myself on a uh, on, on my personal note now it works for me I'm not guaranteeing it it will work for everybody on a ketogenic diet where I was eating 40 eggs per week I experienced huge increase in my libido so that is something that I got affected with I'm not taking that every person who's doing a ketogenic diet is going to get the same benefits similarly everybody on a plant-based diet is not going to get the same benefits so the documentary continues with another couple of uh, anecdotal studies see what anecdotal studies are i feel good so you should also feel good about it well 
you cannot even say with the temperature of your air condition in the summers. Someone might be comfortable at 27, someone at 22 and someone at 17. So how when one temperature does not suit all, how is one diet going to suit everybody? That is my point again and again. One set of clothing cannot be fitted upon a population of people. Population of the people comes in different heights and weights and grids. Okay, so they are trying to manipulate, they are trying to bring in the guilt from your from your consciousness. Now lastly coming up to the nutritional aspect, they talk about certain chemical compounds, uh, TMOs and other uh, certain type of amino acids, which actually trigger an inflammatory response in your body. Somewhat I agree. Some meats, some chicken, some eggs, which are brought up in a bad environment, in a caged environment, where they do not have an open air to breathe, they are fed with antibiotics, tons of antibiotics, and a soy, corn, and grain based feed. Yes, that meat will cause an inflammatory response in your body. I agree with them. But coming on the other hand, do plants cause any inflammatory effect on your body? Yes, they do. And the documentary people, they totally forgot to mention it. Plants also generate an inflammatory response, even an autoimmune response in your body. Some people are allergic to rajma, to kidney beans. Okay. Some people might be allergic to mushrooms. Some people might be allergic to peanuts, to wheat, to milk, to meat, to eggs. What are they trying to prove? They are trying to be biased again. They are trying to push you away from all the needs without making a neutral ground and comparison. Anti-inflammatory foods are available in both plant and animal kingdom. Even mushrooms are anti-inflammatory. Most of our spices are anti-inflammatory. Fish, eggs which are uh, not poultry rays, which are pasture rays, desi eggs, chicken, or goat meat, which is grass fed, have a higher amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. They reduce your risk of heart disease. They reduce your risk of oxidative stress in your body. So if you eat a fish that is high in omega-3s, which has all the three types of omega-3s, damn it is anti-inflammatory. If you eat a desi egg, a pasture raised, uh, egg of a hen it will be anti-inflammatory okay olive oil is the only omega-6 that is anti-inflammatory rest all the plant-based vegetable oils and all the grain based and soy based and cotton seed and sunflower based oils are rich in omega-6 which is inflammatory so how are you going to make the comparison now you need to look at the whole picture and not just this documentary is focusing and shedding a light on a particular area. You cannot do that to change your life standards. Uh, yes, Vaseem Akhtar Bhai, as I already told that the poultry egg, uh, the hen lives in a caged environment. They are fed with ton of antibiotics. They are fed with a feed that is made from maize, corn and soy and grains, which is actually not the majority diet of a chicken. If you leave uh, a chicken in wilderness in an open ground, it's going to eat worms, it's going to eat insects, some sort of grass, some sort of pebbles and rocks along with some grains. Grains are rich in omega-6. When the hen is going to eat a grain-based diet, her egg as well as her meat, her muscle protein will be incorporated with the omega-6 fatty acids. Now these omega-6 fatty acids are inflammatory on the other hand the pasture aid, pasture aid hens and their eggs they live in a more easy environment uh, free from any sort of um, antibiotics and all sort of things so they get a more natural diet so they have a better amount of omega-3 in their egg as well as in their meat so always if you are going to go for a choice of chicken or meat always go for meat because meat has more uh, omega-3 because a goat will graze on grass. 
and not on grains okay so these were the whole things now coming up to one of my <laughs> favorite point our very own terminator arnold schwarzenegger the one of the best in his generation the five times mr olympia who ate a ton of meat who ate a ton of steroids uh, Rupam Das, do we get grass fed goat meat? See, uh, brother, goat meat is mostly grass fed because we do not get shelters or farms of which, which raise uh, goats. We do not get goat farms. There is no industrialization of goats in our country. We get industrialized hens. We get industrialized pigs. Now, pig farming is uh, becoming very popular in India. But whereas it comes to goats and buffaloes and cows, I rather not mention cows I keep it to buffaloes so these are mostly plant-based okay now some feeds that are available uh, for cows for dairy animals uh, so dairy animals also get an exposure to antibiotics and feeds that are grain based whereas goat farming at an industrial level is not yet much practical in our country so uh, eating goat is a better choice uh, rather than uh, eating a hen or any other animal so Arnold Schwarzenegger ate a ton load of meat. Arnold Schwarzenegger got a ton load of antibiotics. He got his liver replaced. He got his heart surgery. He's done it this and that. And now he says he is mostly, he eats mostly plants. That is the word he used in the documentary. They featured him in a vegan documentary because he's a powerful figure. But what he said was, I now mostly eat vegetarian diet or vegetables or vegan diet. Now that is mostly eat. So what does Arnold eat in a rare quantity? Meat and eggs. Okay. He uses almond milk, but he puts a whole egg into his smoothie. You go to YouTube after this session, of course, you go to YouTube. The, you search on the, the search bar uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger diet or what's in Arnold Schwarzenegger's fridge and uh, <clears throat> there is a small video four or five minutes video in which he actually shows his fridge which is majoritarily filled with vegetables but when he makes his protein shake he puts in a whole egg along with the shell so he is not a vegan but because he is an executive producer and he has some good investment in upcoming vegan companies and vegan products, of course he has to be featured in the documentary. So this was whole about nutrition science. Now they get more weird. This weirdness happens with every vegan documentary that I have ever watched. They start complaining about the cruelty. They start complaining about the greenhouse gases. They start complaining about <clears throat> they start complaining about the greenhouse gas emission and the global warming and the amount of water that uh, you know they stay a piece of steak will get 235 gallons of water totally rubbish facts okay if the animal husbandry or the industrialization uh, has taken to the uh, next level because people are consuming too much meat yes they are getting by consuming too much meat i do not recommend uh, you know eating unlimited amounts of meat the companies uh, like uh, venki and uh, uh, other companies who sell these meat products these are a huge industry they are multi-billion dollar industries around the globe it's their fault if they are not using proper methods to treat their animals okay but that gives you no reason to quit on animal diet thoroughly because once you quit your animal diet you are going to be deficient in proteins in a matter of months okay there are so many new ethical companies that treat their cows and they treat their chickens with uh, much better conditions they don't keep them caged they do not force feed them okay but there are pretty less the organic meat industry is very small hardly half percent of the total meat industry why the prices are high you do not get enough quantity the customer base is not there so once you start eating organic meat or grass-fed uh, grass-fed beef 
uh, the, the, the quantity, the availability of such products will increase. Yes, the animals are kept in a cruel way, but we cannot do anything about it. Vegans drive cars. They create pollution. Vegans will never speak about cashews. They eat cashew yogurt. They eat cashew cheese made from cashew. They eat cashew milk. People living in South India, you know how the cashew farmers suffered because of the cashew industry. The ladies are still getting abortions and miscarriages because of the pesticides and the chemicals. They were sprayed by gliders and helicopters on the fields of cashew. People who rip apart the nut from the fruit of cashew, the poisonous juices and the acidic juices, they burn their fingers and their hands. They live in poverty. But the vegans are going to consume these cashew nuts and cashew yogurts and uh, cashew cheese and cashew milk and they will show no remorse towards those people living in poor conditions but they certainly become so much animal friendly when it comes to mistreatment of chicken what about the mistreatment of the farmers that is where things get weird they will give you false information meat industry emissions are come equal and more if we combine the transportation industries totally false that is total bullshit okay so i am going to sum up the video now thank you everybody for the time my closing remarks will be do cooperate some amount of meat into your diet at least eggs into your diet now if you are a vegetarian drink more amount of uh, milk eat more curd have some paneer on alternate days on regular days you know you might not need and if you want to go vegan if you do want to go vegan you have to take iron supplementation protein supplementation omega-3 supplementation vitamin k2 supplementation vitamin a supplementation vitamin b12 supplementation uh, coq10 supplementation also maybe in some cases if you have some sort of a heart disease and you are on statin so these supplementations this list of supplementations and more is what is required to be a healthy vegan so Rupam Das here is uh, asking me about cow milk or buffalo milk so brother cow milk has less amount of fats but more amount of vitamin A buffalo milk has less amount of vitamin A more amount of fats so it totally is dependent upon what type of nutrition do you want if you want to incorporate more fat into your body go for a buffalo milk if you want to keep the fat rate amount fat amount uh, below low or moderate which is not advisable to be honest never go low fat all right never go low fat you can go to up to a medium fat but never go low fat so if you want to go for a medium fat with more amount of vitamin a go for a cow milk if you want more amount of fat then go for a buffalo milk okay so do incorporate some non-veg if you are a vegan see i am not against vegans i am against the illogical responses that vegans give the illogical arguments that these vegan people give they make it too personal they make it too personal uh, when it comes to dietary choices dietary choices don't decide who your friends are dietary choices don't decide who you are going to marry who the love of your life is going to be who your parents are okay dietary choices are solely based upon health and nutrition so keep it that way if you want to go vegan you have to be fully informed don't just go vegan because your friends are going vegan or because uh, you know some other vegan athlete made an impact on your life there are so many vitamins minerals fatty acids and other things which you need in your diet which are absent in plant-based vegan foods i want to share one last fact with you guys there was survey there was a survey done in 2017 16 or 17 which showed that 71 percent of the vegetarians in india have a poor muscle profile what does that state now they are talking about vegetarians people who do eat eggs and milk 71 percent of them had poor muscle profile 
सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द नॉन वेजिटेरियंस इन इंडिया हैड अ पुअर मसल प्रोफाइल वाई इज दैट वाई इज दैट वी मीट ईटर्स पीपल हु कॉल दम सेल्व नॉन वेजिटेरियंस इन इंडिया ट्वेंटी एट आउट ऑफ थर्टी डेज यू आर अ वेजिटेरियन ओके यू आर हार्डली अ नॉन वेजिटेरियन फॉर टू डेज दैट मीन्स एट एवरेज यू ईट चिकन फिश मे बी once in two weeks that makes you a majority vegetarian try to understand the concept you are not you you do not claim that you are a non vegetarian by eating meat once in a month or once in three months you will be labeled as a meat eater a non vegetarian when you eat meat on a regular basis on every other day or almost every day or at least two to three times a week therefore the non vegetarians and the vegetarians who eat eggs or milk all these combined 65 to 70% of the indian population has a poor muscle profile due to the lack of proteins completing your whole white protein requirement and amino acid requirement from plant alone is not only very barely possible in india but getting the amount of protein is almost impossible if you are living in a country like india because the amount of the quality of food is not there the quality of amino acids and uh, proteins is not there there are other factors also like pollution and water pollution and air pollution also and the type of farming that our country is you know going through so taken a lot of your times thank you so much who have listened to this session with keen interest thank you so much for the questions i got two questions which are unanswered mr wasim is buffalo milk adulterated like cow milk yes the uh, dairy industry is not so pure and uh, yes the adulteration is uh, there it depends upon the farmer it is it depends upon the company who is bringing that product up and the farmer who is providing the company with the milk so it's hard to be sure about it and ras is uh, rupam das says that we can push have corporate yes exactly keto push has corporates behind them and uh, i'm not saying keto is bad okay i i personally do recommend keto to a certain type of people but so many keto products they are coming in the market it is a corporate push obviously vegan so many plant based proteins and plant based substitutes vegan patties of uh, that that look like meat they taste like meat uh, impossible burgers all corporates are behind the, these okay so any other diet trend when it comes to chia seeds chia seed has been a huge corporate push soy soy is a huge corporate push so a lot of things are uh, corporate push so we have to Uh, rather than go for labels first of all we have to understand what our own requirements are so wasim say that i eat non veg every day still i have not touched my muscle mass requirement by <laughs> herbal life see uh, wasim bhai we have to go through uh, your total intake if a person who wants to have you scared to your life to buy their product you are never going to meet healthy standards according to those guys so uh, this is in short what i i can hint you if you want to know more about your personal nutrition requirements you can dm me we can talk about it okay and if you are interested we can have a plan for you also so thank you everybody for everyone who's watched thank you so much if you do like the video you can spread it i will uh, repost this video on my erudi nutrition page i will repost this video on my personal id i will also post this video on my youtube channel as well thank you so much for your time you guys have been amazing go omnivore okay be a mockatarian so enjoy your life have a great sunday take care